connect, serve and grow is what you can expect at the House of Reconciliation. Leadership, community, education, wellness and participation is part of our plan for your spiritual growth and success. Family and faith is a core value for the House of Reconciliation, working to help people find their purpose, want to make an impact in the kingdom, ready to tap into your future. Meet us at the House Sundays with Pastor Reginald Campbell, www.houseofreconciliation.org. hurt you so bad that it just seemed like the scars just would not heal. Hallelujah. But you realize as you was in the presence of God, hallelujah, that the Lord was healing your heart. He was healing your soul, my God. Like Beyonce say, you just can't break my soul. No matter how the devil tried. Oh, you've been oh, so good. Come on, somebody raise it up with me and say, so many so many doors you've opened up, so many ways you made, so many times you healed me. That's why I worship you, oh God. Oh, so many doors you've opened, so many ways you made, so many times you healed me. Say with me, been better than good. You've been better than good to me, better than my mama, been better than good, better than grandmama, been better than good, you've been better, you've been better than good to me, oh, yeah, I feel my help by myself if I have to, been better than good to me, oh, say this with me. Should have lost my mind. When I wanted to give up everything, Jesus. Mm, here's my worship to you. You've been. Do I got a worshiper in the building that can close your eyes and open up your mouth and get your breakthrough? Say, you. my provider your Lord you're my savior you're my healer all the tears I've cried all the remedies I've tried oh you pick me up Lord Jesus out of a horrible pit oh you've been I just need somebody to just say it so good I'm so grateful you've been so good, so good to me, to me, oh my God. So right there in the worship, in the presence of God, I just need somebody to just bless them real good in this place. Come on, just love on your Savior. Just love on your God. Come on, somebody say, oh, so you've been, can y'all say it with me? So good, you've been, I know we living in a dark world, but he's still good, y'all. <laughs> My God's still good, you've been so, so good to me. Good morning. How is everyone? Why are you standing with our church anthem? I am the seed that grows and advances the kingdom for soul winning. This word, bread of life, that I received today, it's not only for me, but to be shared with others that they may grow in Christ as well as myself for the purpose of successful living. 
All right, before you see, be seated, I want you to say this with me. Stop being pray for other people. Thank you. You may be seated. I had handed out a sheet. Uh, if I can get a copy, I gave out my other copies. I want to welcome everyone in. Thank you for those that are part of the Greenwood campus. We are here doing the early bird service at the Greenville campus. And we thank those that are here this morning for the end service, as well as those that are part of our virtual campus. We thank, um, thank you for chiming in from those that are our global connections. We are happy to um, be with you this morning. I want to share some things with you that are life shattering and at the same time life changing. So if we can take what I have, it's real, I'm not gonna say real simple, it's a couple of scriptures, but it's a different couple of translations. <laughs> Our core scriptures going into the month of September, which is um, considered uh, fruit of the spirit. Uh, it has nine phases to it. We should have, as people of God, had have something planted. And so that becomes challenging when many times we're still trying to perfect people who choose not to move. And so for you, uh, Numbers 30 and 2, I'll read it. It says, if a man vows a vow to the Lord and swear an oath to bind himself by a pledge, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. Now, I want you to say this with me. The Lord, the Lord takes, me takes me at my word. At my word. How many times have we told God that we were going to do something that we didn't even remember to do. Mm. Now, Numbers 23 and 19, it says, therefore, believe that God will do what he said he would do. If we are in the image of God, then when we speak, the Bible talks about that when God speaks, so it be that it is done in the spirit world, but it has to be carried out in the natural. The problem is when it comes to um, Isaiah 41 and 10, it says, uh, do not fear for I am with you. And I wanna deal with that just a little bit. And if you have a paper, just circle that part. I am with you, do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Psalms 15, 1, stanza through 4, I just want to, we, we have some things that hinder us. And those things are, we slander ourselves. We slander other people. We do wrong to our neighbor. We do wrong to ourselves. And then it talks about we should despise vile people. It is very tough to walk in truth and function in dysfunction. So what we say don't match up with what we do and what we do don't match up with the vision that God has for us. This creates constant conflict that leads to constant dysfunction. Here is something I want you, this is for our September class, I want you to look at and uh, you can write these scriptures down if you're part of our virtuous campus. Numbers 14 and 34. There is a penalty, penalty, penalty for doing things that we should not be saying and doing. Does this make sense? There's a penalty. Here is what it, it says. After the number of days which you search the land. Now let me explain this to you. God has given you dreams. He's given you visions. Here is the thing that I say to you. No one can discover your innate inheritance but you. What someone can do is help you fulfill that. But if you don't even know what you were born with, what is the lineage in your family, what are the skill sets, what are the tools, every family has something. Many people are too caught up in chaos. 
Here's the problem. Uh, search the land even 40 days each day for a year you shall bear your iniquity. Now, if you flip it back over, it talks about when you make a vow. When we tell God we're going to do something, the earthly ram tends to interfere with the spirit spiritual production that God has given us. I just want you and I to examine here briefly, can we go to heaven and give God the excuses of why we did not maximize and strengthen the gifts that he's given us? Can we do that? So it says, for, for you bear your iniquities. In other words, when we speak a thing that we don't plan to do, we also sin against our innate inheritance. And we dethrone our spiritual birthright. So it says, even 40 years you shall know, here is the problem, my breach of promise. God just doesn't promise you. He has promised something that your grandparents, and this is why people research their history to know what their uh, great-grandparents or whatever did back in the day. Here's the thing. We don't take the time. Because people have us so caught up into confusion. This is why I said from the beginning, stop being prey for other people, of other people. Because whatever God has given you, and I shared this with someone, you can go through the plan of salvation, but it's no guarantee that you're going to get in heaven and stay. We are all guaranteed to go, but we're not all guaranteed to stay. And so when, but see, we don't look at our lives in that serious point. We look at our, li our lives through emotional lenses. And so the Bible says, for the 40 years, and this is in the NIV, one year for every. So here's the thing. God has given you, me, everyone in here, something. Everyone that's a part of the Greenwood campus, something. Everyone that's a part of the virtual campus, something. Everyone that's a part of the Global Connection, something. And we're too busy trying to fit in with everybody else. And when we stand before God, whether you believe in him or not, what's our answer? What's my answer? So when we speak and when we say we're going to do something, God takes us at his word. I think I can't, I think it's the, the term amen means, uh, do I know? It is so. So when you say something in God's realm, it is so. And so we are breaking the covenant. And so we are so used to breaking the covenant with God that we have forgotten about the penalty. So I'm going to ask you now, how busy have you really been? So, you know, that's something that we'll put up. That's why I said stop being prayed for other people. And so here is how it begins. God gives everybody something. And I said this to help some people. If the word of God offends you, then God's word has now found you. Most people want to be in the place that they can hide and be protected. And the word of God, I don't remember the scripture. I gave it to you <coughs> the other day that talks about how the word of God is sharp than any two-headed sword, and it pierces in and not only does it pierce his in, it pierces the thoughts and the heart of man. Hebrews 4 and 12. Somebody get that real quick. So, so here's a part that sometimes we have. A part of anger is guilt. And here's the problem when you deal with guilt and anger. It's a temporary relief, but it leaves permanent scars. And why is that critical? For the simple fact that when we error, God has given us the tool of forgiveness. The problem is we'll say it, but we don't practice it. And we, we don't practice forgiveness 
and try to correct and modify our ways and scale up our lives. Then the scar of whatever we did or whatever somebody did to us, we're still picking at that scar. When we're supposed to be positioning ourselves to move forward, we're still somewhere holding an internal grudge because we didn't win. We don't like how someone treated us. So a temporary relief is to find something that inebriates and take me away from my pain, but all it's doing is leaving a permanent scar. So then when someone comes by or something comes up, you're still tender from something that happened six months ago, six years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Does this make sense? Here is where we're going. Do we have, um, what was it, Hebrews? Will you read it real quick? Now, see, here's the problem. We think it's the preacher. And most people authorize and tell their preachers, you preach something good to make people happy. So we, we have this cloud where everybody feels good. Everybody feels good. And, oh, I felt good. I felt good. I feel good. That's temporary. It's a difference in feeling good, and it's another phase of doing good, and it's another phase of being good. So it says, and what? So let's say, everybody say, the word of God will sneak and punch you. It's quick. Come on. <laughs> and powerful. And powerful. It, it leaves an effect on you. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Mm-hmm. Piercing even to the divine assembly of soul and spirit. Soul and spirit. So now give me the NIV version. Who has the NIV version? Because it talks about it pierces your thoughts. So this is a whole scheme that God has set for humanity to live in holiness and righteousness. And it doesn't mean that you're going to be there after this class. It means that we have another level to achieve in our life. You have it? For the word of God is alive and active. Ah, so it just don't deal with something old. It addresses the present issues. It addresses the past, it addresses the present, and it addresses the future. Come on. So, is, so why is there such a resistance for when we're so carnal, we look at the person when we should be listening to the word? Come on. So it creates a wedge. You should know the difference between the soul and the spirit. Come on. Oh, it hits you in the flesh. Mm. It hits you. Tell somebody, it hits you in the flesh. It, hit, it hits you in the, ooh. Ooh. Yeah, it hits you in the, ooh, we. Come on. So why are we so mad when we think someone is talking about us and the word of God has found us and said? So I, I, I wrote a question. Gonna see. Oh, here it is right here. I'm going to ask you a question as we dabble into this. Uh, do you think you have room to grow? Do you really think? Because most people are so full of stuff that they can't see or don't think that they have room. So this is why the second word we have is listen. If there's no room to grow, mm. then there's no reason to listen. If we know everything, mm -hmm. how many of us have tuned out the ability to hear new information versus just going and carrying out what we feel like we should be doing? So the question becomes, do you think you have room to grow? That's the thought. I'm going to ask you to write with me. I'm going to read to you Matthew, the five wise and the five foolish. Our topic uh, this morning, trusting the navigation 
of God. The Bible talks about when you come to the light, walk therein, it says his word is a lamp unto my path. We want to turn the light on. We're closing out a new day, a new you. We were supposed to get it together in August. Anybody want to say anything? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see the look like, uh, is, is it about to be the end of August already? I, th I thought it was still July. You mean I've been, I done missed the whole month of August. That's my whole point. You're supposed to be bearing fruit and walking in the spirit. And, and, <laughs> and we still somewhere Eight still. Yeah, okay. Come on, Sister Cletus. We, we, we still somewhere caught up with. Boy, don't nobody. <laughs> Ooh, we about to get out early. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was June. I, I thought we were still dealing with the devil. Yeah. Well, some of us are still, uh, we're headed to September, which I see should have been planted and germinated. And so we're supposed to be growing in the fruit of the Spirit. And as we grow in the fruit of the Spirit, the, the uh, number 10 means now you should have a testimony. You can't have a testimony if you haven't finished. So we're still in testing season. The, the expressions look like we still, are we still back there fighting the devil? We're still fighting. We're still kicking and stomping and fighting the devil. So we injured. We done fought so long we injured. A hip out of joint, leg out of joint. Some, what I'm saying is some things you should be passed by now. You're about to miss your season. If there is no seeds planted, there can be no harvest. Because we're still mad about something we can't change. Some people are stuck. There used to be a term called the tar baby. And the tar baby was sitting on the side of the road, and every time you touch it, something, you'll be stuck to it. And some of us have been fighting the same thing and thinking it's going to change when we have to realize you have to change. So here is Matthew 25, 1 through 4. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps. Everybody starts on the same line. The Bible says that out of one blood was all nations made. It is not the nation who has to dissolve their whatever it is they have against you. It is you who have to rise above the carnality of a nation. I'll say it again. Because there's certain things about you that are not going to change. And you're still trying to get other people to respect you. When the truth of the matter is, you don't respect yourself. Here is how it's written. A part of anger is not loving yourself first before loving others. What are you saying? You've given yourself to people who didn't have anything to give you back. You've given yourself to companies who didn't have anything to give you back. You've given, we've given ourselves to situations. We've given ourselves to certain programs, electronic, digital, whatever. And we wake up late. And then we blame ethnicity for why we're not successful. Mm -hmm. Because we literally turn a natural blind eye and a spiritual blind eye to what we should be doing when the word says, that's why God put the word on earth, because now we have a guide. Mm. So the question becomes trusting the navigation of God. If you go back to the history in the law, he says we make a vow to each other. So when you come to Christ, this is why he says, which did you set it down first in the New Testament? Because we have some people that want to cut out the Old Testament now and throw it away. I don't know how you tear out the foundation to live on floated water, all right? You have to have a foundation. Anything that's going to stand has to have a foundation because the Bible talks about being tossed and, and, and through, through just frivolous and, 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 and these unorthodox doctrines that people come up with. Come on, uh -huh. And they just accept anything. 
So we just, er we just take your elbow and just erase sin out the Bible. We ain't, we gonna get rid of that word right there. We gonna get rid of that word that one right there. We're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna throw all of it away. You have to realize part of anger is not loving yourself first. Who you are. Who is your innate inheritance? What was I gifted with? The problem is you're still looking in the mirror. The mirror doesn't tell you who you are. The mirror tells you what stage you are in your life. You need to look in your spirit. You need to talk to your God. You're looking in the mirror, well, my hair ain't this, and, and this and that, and I ain't got this, and I ain't got that, and look at what they got, girl. and look at you. you. I got a picture of a little girl. If I had it, I'll pull it up. And, 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 and then they said, I can't go, and all that. You're looking in the mirror at something temporal. You need to look in the soul of your eyes and ask God, who am I? I wasn't put here to be someone's punching bag. So the question becomes, as we move into September, am I going to still be foolish? And went forth to meet the bridegroom. So they all had the same information. And five of them were wise and five of them was foolish, which means it's how you process the information. If you buy into people don't want you to have nothing, guess what you will have? Nothing. <laughs> if you buy in that you have reached your maximum. So what happens if you live another 20 years? So you can't deal with inflation. Your car going to need repairs. Mm -hmm. Because you're still living off of what you had. Mm -hmm. And who you thought you were. And you never looked inside of you. Yes. And discovered what God empowered you to do. Does this make sense? Yes, now, I want you to write with me this morning a couple simple things. Oh, I tore up this. I spelled this T-H-I. <laughs> Somebody say, don't, that, don't, don't write a paper. Don't write a paper. Don't write it. I can't write a paper. Here are the words. Here are the remaining words for 2022. All right? It's simply three things, and then I'm going to give you a couple things. And then if you have any questions, we're going to try to answer those. These are the remainder words for 2022. Number one, becoming spiritual. Yeah. Becoming spiritual. We have to overcome carnal. Carnal is not going to overcome us. We have to overcome carnal. What does that mean in lay terms? That means when something happens, I, I was at a place yesterday and someone had, had said, oh, he's an author and he wrote a really, really good book and it's helping myself and my spouse. And, and they asked, and the guy said, yeah, he really good, but he like a drill sergeant. Don't disrespect the drill sergeant. I am not a drill sergeant. I am just a person that don't have time to put all that mayonnaise on your head and put that mustard on you and pat you on the back and tell you you're great and watch you fall off a cliff. <laughs> now, ask me why. You can talk to me. Why? Because the word that I'm going to give you mm. will either teach you and give you tools how to climb the mountain mm. or it will push you to the cliff to fall off the mountain. Because if you're not spiritual and we're not growing spiritual, you're going to take what I'm going to teach personal. Mm. And you're going to be mad at me and dislike me and tune me out when I'm not here to buttercup you. <laughs> oh, I can preach you happy and you're still broke. Mm -hmm. I can preach you happy and you're still going to be on the same job complaining. I can preach you happy and you're still going to have the same broken relationship. I'm going to teach you happy, and you're still going to have the same level of education. I can teach you happy, and you're still going to be living in poverty and believe your, believe your privilege. And I can preach you happy, and you still be mad at me over a piece of baloney. But if you're spiritual, mm -hmm. then the word that God gives me will help order your steps. Mm -hmm. But if you look at take it me personally, 
I don't like because he don't wear a suit. He don't wear a robe. My preacher got to wear a robe. Well, let me tell you some Isaiah said in the tree, butt naked <laughs> for over 60 years and prophesied to the, to the king. What, what, what in the hell was wrong with him? He sat in the tree butt naked. Look it up. He sat in the tree and prophesied. I couldn't have went out there and talked to him. Dude, you're gonna have to cover that up. I, I don't need <laughs> stuff hanging out the tree. Uh, this thing that I know, I know that tree was like, would you please get off me and put some clothes on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I said it. This is my show. You always can turn the dial. That is focus. I am serious. What was he thinking? Now, don't y'all try that, because it ain't going to work out too well. <laughs> don't come in here in your birthday suit. You got to go. We already scarred. Spiritual. Any questions on that one? Here is what God requires of us. We have to learn how to be professional. God doesn't give you a skill in a particular era. And then you come to church and just go stupid. He doesn't give you a skill. See, because here's the problem. You continue to lower your standards to meet the needs of other people, and it drains you of what you need because nothing can pour into you. You're always pouring into someone else. And people who like to pour into everybody and never be poured in, those are controllers. See, my job is to teach you what you don't know and what you will need to know go forward. You have to make up your mind if you just want to hear the same and eat the same bologna sandwich every time. Come on, come on. Just tell me I'm good. Tell me I'm okay. I think I have an issue with that because then I'm lying to you. Listen, if I'm going to go to hell, I am not going for lying to you in church. That's right. That's right. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Mm -mm. I can go. I can go to hell another way. <laughs> I got some other things I can do. I ain't been saved all my life. If I know I'm going to hell, I'm not oh man, please, y'all, I'd be poof. If an angel came to say, I said, you sure? Oh no, you ain't going, dude. You really sure? Shh, I'd be out that door so fast. Y'all stay here if you want to. <laughs> Professional, you should bring whatever gifts and talents that God has given you. Because here's the thing you don't know with professional. It is acquired and it is demanded in the kingdom. See, when you have dictators, and we have those in the body of Christ, yes, we do. they want to dictate to you everything. They want to be the big fish in the little pond. Come on, we have to learn that we are shepherds which means we are almost the lowest form because God looks at you over us we are nothing but temporary vessels the Holy Spirit what you're gonna go to work go to work tomorrow and speak in tongues on your job <laughs> go to the bank tomorrow if you're gonna make a deposit <laughs> and just go up there and just start speaking in tongues see how well that work out fall out in the floor Start running around the building and throwing your shoes out. Fly around. <laughs> you, you, you see, the professionalism is you're bringing your intellect and intelligence. Mm. And whatever gift God has given you to use in the body of kingdom and, and, and in the body of Christ. And the problem is, is when most people enter the door, they shut their minds off. Uh, is that, is that, uh, Bathroom, bathroom, me, bathroom. We don't have a bathroom. We have a restroom. A bathroom has a tub or a shower. <laughs> we have a restroom. Uh, you mean you, you want me to clean, clean the restroom? Yeah. Why? I'm professional. I see a need in the kingdom. I will address it. Most people who go to churches. The churches never change because the people never change. Yeah. 
and jumping and shouting and spitting and hollering and flying all over the building and prophesying don't change it. It fulfills the moment, but it doesn't direct you to the destiny. I'll say it again. Most churches don't change because the people don't change. And there's four or five in there that gets themselves a title, and now they want to dominate everybody. And they literally cripple the growth of the ministry. Because can't nobody do nothing until they ask and get permission from Sister Burdine. And they got to ask Deacon Lightfoot. And if Deacon Lightfoot say no, don't nobody say nothing. Am I making sense? Any other question about professionalism? Number three, functioning in the spirit of excellence. Functioning in the spirit of excellence. We don't give God our best. And let me tell you something. Where I come from, there are people that will probably be mad at me, but they think in giving God your best is wearing a suit every Sunday and having your shoe. Well, you go, oh, no, get a car, go back. Well, where your money at then? <laughs> we need a new roof on the church. You cannot give God your best when you're living beneath your privilege and opportunity. You can't, you can't function at a high level with low wages. Mm. To whom much is given? Much is required. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. So you need to function. So you don't need, you don't go to work. Hi, how are you? Doing wonderful today, Bob. How are you doing? Doing good, Ether. How are you? How are you, Quita? I'm doing wonderful. Then come to church. Uh, the, uh, 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 what, 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 what we do? What? Who are you? Mm. Who? It's more than clothes. It's more than hair. It's more than shoes. It's more than bow ties. You think you're going to win the dressing contest in heaven? <laughs> you think heaven's got a best dress? <laughs> uh, okay, come on. Who got the best white robe? <laughs> Who got the best white robe? Who got a white robe? That's why Jesus got to change us. We'd be up there. We'd never make it. We'd be in the dressing room still. Does this match this is my wing? I don't want no gold wings. I want some pink wings. I want some purple wings. I want some yellow wings. Then somebody be up there telling me, I want some red wings. Somebody said that, Lord Jesus, okay. Okay. I'm not even going to comment on that because it, it'd be a whole lot of people probably trying to crash my little, my little thing. Uh, here, here's, okay, so that's three. Now, here's a couple of things I'm going to give you real quick. I'm going to ask you a question, and you don't have to answer it. If you would like to, you can. Do you really want to know what will make you better? Do you really want to know? Because if you don't, you're going to be stuck with the information you have the rest of your life. Because God will take you out of the familiar and put you in the unfamiliar. That's number one. Do you want to know what will make you better? This is a covenant and an agreement that I need you to make with God. I don't need you just to hear it. I need you to buy into the word of God. So then God can change your life. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Number two, we have to learn to listen. It's a profound skill that is required to move forward. Number two, we have to learn how to listen. It's a profound skill in order to move forward. Let me know when you're ready for number three. Remember, I said the topic is trusting the navigation of God. The first thing that God's going to do with you and I is bring us into self-awareness. 
in the old scripture, it would be called carnal. God's going to make you aware of you before he makes you aware of others. So you need to quit picking on your spouse. You need to quit picking on the people on your job. You need to quit picking on yourself. You need to quit picking on your children and your grandchildren because when you start this journey, the first thing God's going to do is make you self-awareness of you. God's going to show you your strengths, your weaknesses, your potential, and your opportunities. So I, I had to change. That's why you see me come in today. I normally wear my holy jeans and a regular shirt. But I said, you know, everybody trying to, you know, trying to pimp my gift. So let me make them scale up. You, you see what I'm saying? So that's why today I brought a little thunder. Give me, give me a little, eh, eh, eh. Like I brought a little thunder. I brought a little drop the mic and bust you in the lip club. Yeah. I'm packing today. That's what I'm Okay. So, so God's going to bring you in self-awareness because here's the thing. We have to accept we need help and guidance. Here is where, and it's number four. And, and I, I'm going to give you this. Let me see. Yeah, I can give you this. Let me go ahead and give you, this is an adder, ad, not an adder boy. This is an adder. Every four years is a season. This is what I'm going to give you at number four. God has made you and I a promise. We can no longer be breaches of the promise. You cannot tell that lie on God. Ain't nobody ever done nothing for me. I told a man, stop talking to me. And I've been knowing him for 40 some years. I said, stop talking to me. Because everything with you is an excuse. I, you know, if the Lord wanted me to have the Lord, the Lord, he you know, I think it. I know God has given you everything. He created you in his image. It's time for you to stop making excuses in life. God has created you in his image, and he tells you, listen, I, if you don't get nothing else out of this today, you have at least seven generations. God made a promise to them when they stepped on earth. And he made it to them, and they couldn't fulfill it. He is going to fulfill it in you. But you have to be positioned in order to fulfill the promise and the destiny that God has. You are the one that now resurrects the artistic skill sets in your family. You are the one now that operate out of intellect and intelligence. You're the one now that operates out of the spirit of excellence in God. You're the one now that sees the natural and the spiritual gifts that God has given you. So it comes with separation. You can't be in the crowd and win. It takes a certain amount of people on the team in order to win. And you're trying to bring every snotty-nosed person in your life, backwards walking, stupid talking, dumb living. Ooh, I almost said a word in the Lord. Lord, let me spin around and cool off, Jesus. Ooh, because Pookie almost came loose in the church. Little Roger. Here is number five. Here is why God has made you a promise. He has put it in your innate inheritance. Now, I'm going to say this, and I'm, I'm probably going to work here for another few minutes because I, I want to get this out because when I come back, I got to move forward. There was a man who dreamed, a little kid out in Texas, poor, lived in a shack, and he had very little paint, and he would take naps, and he would get up and pour sand in his paint and paint. And he painted what he dreamed. I don't have a picture of it. And he, put, he made the border out of sticks. And somehow, some way, Somebody said, you know, you ought to put that in an art gallery. See, there's always company that's looking for additional stuff. And so long story short, in 1950, it was put in an art gallery in New York for $150, 1950. Now, I almost said something, but I, I, I'm glad I didn't say it. I could have made that. And 2000. 
11. It was worth $75,000. But listen to what it was worth in 2021. $125,000. Uh, a little, it wasn't even as big as this. It wasn't even as big as this. Just a little small. He would just wake up, fell asleep in the yard. He'd just take a little bit of paint. He was poor, and he'd just scribble something, and he said he was scribbling his dreams. And in 2021, which was a year ago, it sold for $125,000 for a kid that was drawing in the dirt. He wasn't famous. What are you saying? Two things. There's somebody that'll take a chance on you. The question is, will you take a chance on yourself? Your gift doesn't fit in the crowd. And I'm here to awaken you that whatever it is, if it's making flower pot. See, back then, they didn't have the Internet. They didn't have all these tools, these social media tools, and these uh, search engines to do things. Mm -hmm. So what is it that you've thrown away in your family? Mm. Oh, that's old grandma, grandma house, old regular house. You don't know what grandmother and great-grandmother was gifted that's sitting in the back room that you never knew about, a box of pearls or something. A lady had something that was made from the original guy, Mr. Tiffany, I guess, whatever it was, and it was worth like $1.2 million. But her grandfather bought it in the 40s and gave it to her mother, and they thought it was cheap. You know why? Because it had sapphires and something else in it. Didn't have high-quality stones. But Mr. Tiffany liked those stones, and he made a necklace. And so he, he bought it for his wife for like $100 in the 40s, which was a lot of money. And today it's worth $1.2 million, and it was passed on in the family. Mm -hmm. How much stuff has been thrown away in your family? And you somewhere looking for a blessing. Oh, I'm looking for a blessing. What is it? Looking for a miracle? Give me a tune. Looking for a miracle. No, you, you, ain't, you don't need to be looking for a miracle. You are the miracle. Mm -hmm. You need to dig into you. The problem is you want to be accepted by everybody. Come on in here. But you only can be planted by God. This is number five, that he has put in our innate inheritance. You have to discover what your gift is. What you see in the mirror is only a fraction of what you can be. Number six, it's also a part of your spiritual birthright. So you almost have 100% guaranteed to succeed if you keep trying. Number seven, here is where it hurts. Somebody said it's going to hurt a little bit. It's going to hurt a little bit. We'd rather die before we plant seeds and be responsible for the harvest. Ask me why. why. We hate process. Mm. You're not going to get there overnight. Mm. My book, to relaunch my book, it has almost made my hair grow. Mm. In fact, I, when I get down to the other campus, y'all laughing. Uh, 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 the songstress down there, the praise and worship leader, sent me a video where a guy had a little hair. And then, now look at y'all laughing. I said, you know, I think I'm going to try that. I think I'm going to get me one. Where they put you, you know, men now have the little pieces, uh, and it was perfect. I said, man, it looks so good. I said, I think I'm going to get me one. And she sent it to me, talking about Reginald Campbell. I said, yeah, I uh, figure out what size I need. I need you to measure my head. I, I at least want to try one at the house. Now, you just got in my family. How are you going to sit there and tell me that Papa cannot get him some hair? <laughs> I don't want no wig. I want a hair piece. Now, see, now you got jokes. I might get, see, we, let me move on. Let me move on. We'd rather die before we plant seeds and be responsible for the harvest. What am I saying? I'm going to give you this in my closing. Not only when you discover it, you are responsible for now setting it up that it can at least function the next three to five generations. Mm. 
God said, we'd rather die before we plant the seeds and be responsible for the harvest. And let me give you this. Let, let me help us out. We're going to close out with this, these three words. Somebody said, why is it so difficult? Come on, say it loud. Why is it so difficult? Because purpose brings pain. When you find purpose, it brings pain. Why? You have to birth it, and it has to grow. So you're going to have to birth it. And I don't know many moms, and men cannot even begin to think of the enormous amount of pain it is when you go into labor. Yo, when God gives you purpose, you're going to have to go into labor. Because you've got to birth it, and you're responsible for growing it. So, on, well, we, we won't have class this Wednesday. We're going to do a video. Um, but when I come back in September, I'm bringing pacifiers. <laughs> because purpose brings pain. Get like a pretty one? Okay. Okay. Do, does, does that make sense? So you wonder why it's a struggle? You got to birth it. First, you got to plant it. You can't birth what you didn't plant. Did I help you? God bless you. I'll see you soon. Hmm?